Hey guys, Roman here from Game Guides, and in this video, I'm going to take a closer look at DLSS in Delta Force and trying to figure out whether and in which situations DLSS can boost performance in Delta Force. Now, I made a whole video on each and every single graphic setting in Delta Force, detailing their performance as well as side by side comparisons. And in that video, I pointed out that all of these super resolution modes give me less performance. On that video, I got so many comments telling me that they're actually seeing quite a significant boost in performance when enabling specifically DLSS, which unfortunately I really didn't go too much into detail in that video. So today we're going to see whether there is any merit to these comments and if it's worth to enable DLSS in Delta Force. To begin with, let's have a look at what probably led to many people thinking that DLSS has such a positive impact on performance in Delta Force. Now, I just booted into the black side here, as you can see, and I'm getting roughly 200 FPS, as you can see from the top right corner. Now I'm going into the menus and I'm going to enable the performance mode of the LSS. And after a few seconds, we can see that we're landing at around 230-ish FPS in the black side. So that apparently is a slight boost in performance of the LSS. Let's now also have a look at the balanced preset. Here we can see roughly 235-ish FPS, and that's something that I've always noticed that balance somehow usually perform better than performance for some reason, very strange. And finally, let's also have a look at the last um, preset, which is the quality preset. This should give you the best quality, but the worst performance. And you can see that we're still landing at around 228 FPS ish. Now there are two problems with this approach. First of all, this is not really representative of a proper gaming session. So instead of benchmarking in the black side, we should really boot into a live match where we also have other players and see what the performance is there. And second of all, it's super important to always look at a moving scene when trying to estimate the visual quality that the LSS is giving you. So first I loaded into a live match on Ascension with my primer system, which has an i9-3900K paired with an RTX 4080. The tests that I'm showing here are for 1440p. And to the top right, you can see the current FPS. This is the first number there. Don't bother about the other numbers. This is basically for benchmarking. So as you can see, without any super scaling, I'm getting roughly 210 FPS. Now let's go into the setting and turn on DLSS in the performance mode. As you can see, now that we're in a live match, I'm actually no longer getting any higher performance with DLSS enabled. Now, if I switch to the balanced preset, I might get slightly higher performance here. Of course, this is not representative and I'm going to give you the proper numbers um, in just a minute for different systems. Um, but as you can see here, once again, I'm not getting any higher performance. Finally, in the quality preset, we would actually not expect much higher performance either. And as you can see, once again, I'm getting roughly 210 FPS. Next, I switched my display to my 1080p monitor. And funnily enough, I didn't really get higher performance. In fact, I got lower performance than on 1440p, which goes to show how bad this game is optimized, at least for Intel and Nvidia. And on this configuration, the LSS actually helped me gain roughly 10 FPS over having it disabled. However, honestly, the difference is so small that this also might be down to sampling uncertainty. And that's still not the huge boost in performance that I would have expected, as many people have reported in the comments of my last YouTube video. So with that, I moved on to my benchmark system, which is heavily CPU bottlenecked, on which I really wouldn't expect the LSS to make any difference. And to no one's surprise, the LSS once again did not significantly improve performance on that system. Again, these tests are performed at 1080p and on the Ascension map. So finally, I replaced the AMD GPU in my old AMD gaming system with the RTX 4080 from my Intel system to see whether the combination of an AMD CPU and an Nvidia GPU would finally show me higher performance when enabling the LSS. And sure enough, with this combination of hardware, I'm finally seeing a roughly 20 to 25 FPS boost in performance when enabling the LSS. Note that this is only the case at 1440p, so if we have a relatively high GPU bottleneck, if I drop the resolution to 1080p, once again I'm actually losing performance when switching on the LSS. Now, besides the pure performance standpoint, we should also look at the visual clarity of the game when enabling the LSS. For this, I once again jump back into the black side, because there I have a controlled environment, and I'm showing you what the image looks like when moving. 
And in my opinion, this is actually the larger advantage that DLSS can provide you over only improving your performance, and that is to provide some anti-aliasing to the game. Now in my last video, I showed you how to actually disable the temporal anti-aliasing post-processing effect that is by default applied to Dials of Force. Now this makes the game look extremely blurry and you're not really seeing anything at a far distance. But if you turn this off, the opposite is kind of the case where the entire game becomes very pixelated. So with the LSS, you can actually counteract this pixelization and make the game look actually extremely smooth and very pleasing to the eye. Be very aware though, DLSS introduces very strong fringing around sharp objects. So for instance, if you look into this guy and you are moving your rifle fast across your screen, then you can see kind of trailing edges or almost like waterfall-like features coming off the end of your rifle. This is a known artifact of DLSS, which is always much worse when you go to the performance settings of DLSS and less pronounced on the quality preset. So in summarizing this video, should you enable the LSS and are you going to be getting higher performance with the LSS in Delta Force? Now in terms of performance, you're probably only going to see any increases if you are severely GPU bottlenecked. So if you're in the range of 90 to 100% GPU usage, the LSS is likely going to give you higher performance. On the other hand, if your GPU is only sitting at around 60%, you're definitely not going to see any improvements in performance. This is even more true at 1080p, where this GPU bottleneck is even smaller, and the opposite is the case at 4K, where you're most likely going to need to use the LSS in order to get playable frame rates. On the other hand, if you don't like the very pixelated look of the game, especially after you've disabled TAA, then enabling the LSS will make your game look much better. Just be aware that with the LSS, moving objects have this kind of ghost shadow behind them, or introduce kind of this fringing artifacts especially in the performance mode, so stay away of that and instead use the quality preset. Now, just for completeness, if you want to disable the LSS once again, you'll have to restart the game in order for the anti-aliasing that is enabled as soon as you enable the LSS to be fully disabled. Now, if you learned something new today, then leave a like and a comment down below. And if you want to see more in-depth videos on gaming technologies, then definitely subscribe to the channel, it's completely free. But that's it for today guys, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.